Superman 3. This time, Richard Pryor has come to Metropolis. Oh, I'm sorry. And he's got something to sell. <laughs> he's the best con man and the world's greatest computer genius. Let me tell you something. I can't ski! But then he falls <laughs> for a scheme to turn the ultimate computer into the ultimate weapon. Hey everybody, this is Perch, and I'm here with Ryan. How you doing? Doing good. This is a we're we're I'm actually here with Ryan. There's no uh, we're, it's, it's it's we're breaking all COVID protocols. Yep, we're in a room in front of a big screen. And what we've got this movie on, and this is the movie we've been waiting for. This is what we've been building up to. It's uh, Superman three, which with Richard Pryor, Christopher Reeves. Uh, I I we we talked about this before. This is my favorite Superman movie. It's, you're just you're laughing. <laughs> well, favorite. I I mean. Yeah. No, I mean, it is a Superman movie. Yes, that's and true. It, and it does have Richard Pryor in it. Yes. And that makes it funny. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I, no, when I watched this movie, I realized I've never seen this movie all the way through, except maybe like the first time. Really? Okay. Like, I, I think I've caught it on, um, you know, cable Yeah. a bunch of times. And, you know, I, I definitely stick around for the scenes that I want to watch. And those those scenes are great. Yeah. But watching this movie through the first time, I was like, man, this is a terrible movie. And then the second time, I, I just loved it. And so, I you know, it falls <laughs> somewhere in between the two. It's, this, is a, this is a terrible movie that is barely a Superman movie. And, but enjoyable to watch. But enjoyable to watch. I mean, yeah. can, you, can you imagine, like, having a Batman movie where they just throw Will Ferrell into it? <laughs> I like can't, not not I can't. in a not in like a Jim Carrey is the Riddler kind of way, but as like just a guy yeah. who's having a, his own adventures. I can't imagine that. I want that now. That is the city of Bruce. Uh, that is what we will do for Super. No, um, that so it's no. it's like two different movies. It's like they it took is. the Richard Pryor movie and then they had the Batman movie and then at the end they throw on this like Roger Corman, yeah, weird ending yeah yeah it's a very it's a strange movie i I think you have if you were a fan of uh dc comics in particular superman i think during the 70s when uh or the 60s when there are these crazy adventures the cover would have like superman depriving aquaman of water or killing lois or something this feels like it fits into that well i mean we we've talked about the first two movies and how they kind of capture the right tone of superman yeah and this movie doesn't No, no no But it's still extremely hilarious. So a bunch of things on this. Uh, First off, uh, Richard Pryor um, didn't want to do this movie, apparently. And it was kind of, he he was paid more to do it. But you got to keep in mind that he just was not really in the mood or excited about this film. Christopher Reeves wasn't that excited about it, which is why his hair color is suddenly brown in some of the scenes, because he's wearing a wig. For a lot of the movie, I thought he was just evil Superman when he had the brown hair. Yeah, no, they just they they stopped with the wig. Yeah, that's okay. like what went on. And then this movie went through some major changes. Apparently, the villain was supposed to be uh, Mr. Mitzelplick, who at one point was going to be Richard Pryor, but then that didn't work, and so they kind of shifted, and they were going to do something with Brainiac, and you can kind of see that. Yeah, in the no, end. it feels like they built the set for the ending, and yeah. then they wrote the movie kind of to get to that set. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would agree with you there. It's um, but this is a this is a much funnier. Um, we're, we're so we're watching this thing now, and and this opening credit sequence is one of my favorite, you know, long credit sequences. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we forgot about the cold open where they uh, oh, where he's Richard Pryor is in. At least I, I think so. I mean, yeah, I don't I don't know cool if there's one. multiple versions of this movie, but I I kind of doubt it because nobody so, nobody yeah. likes this movie. Well, what would it do for me? It would do anything you tell me to tell it to do. A machine so powerful. Baby, it's Daddy! It can control the Earth. No. Now, getting down to business. Change the weather. Now something. You're a genius. And reprogram Superman. Thought you'd never get here. Well, I hope you don't expect me to save you, because I don't do that anymore. (laughs) 
the the cold open he's in the uh, unemployment office and right away you know there's more diversity in that office than the previous two supermen <laughs> that's, that's true there's one i don't than, know what they're saying there's more that. than one black guy yes yeah, exactly yeah. so uh so they you know then he learns that he he wants to become a computer programmer yeah and then they start the title sequence and they've you know thrown away john williams and replaced it with I don't, I don't know who, but some other guy. <laughs> and then they have these wacky, you know, hey, it's a blind guy. It's it's the most goofy. It feels bit. like it's I mean, Popeye, if you it, remember that movie. Oh, totally. So it is, um, I mean, every aspect of this cold open, you've got the uh, very uh, sexy woman who's basically distracting everything. Right. And sits off this chain of events like Rube Goldberg style. Right. Where the city's all going to a disaster. And, and every piece of this from... There's a bank robber, and right. he slides down. And Superman doesn't catch the bank robber. He just stops the guy from drowning in his car. Right. That's yeah. the stakes of this movie, is that <laughs> a guy could drown in his crappy late 70s car, <laughs> and Superman saves him from drowning in yeah. his car in the middle of Manhattan. Yeah, the bank robber just gets away. Yeah, he just gets away. Yeah. No, I mean, why would you catch the bank robber when you could save a guy from drowning in his car? The, the sequence here is that... Because the bank robber runs across the street, the guy in the car swerves, runs over a fire hydrant, and then st- then is is drowning. Instantly, the car fills up with water, and nobody can open up the door. Right, because it's a crappy car yeah. from the 1970s. I mean, it could have just <laughs> caught fire and still been drowning in it. So Superman, um, this also gives us the uh, him going into the photo booth. Right. And then the photo booth manages to capture him. Uh, transforming. <laughs> yeah, and he gives the photo to the kid, and the kid is the one who played him when he was a baby in the first Really? Superman. Yeah. Oh, so I they, didn't know that. They brought him back. So that's the significance of the, of the kid. So we've seen this kid naked, basically, is what they're saying. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, okay. you know, I don't watch those kind of films, but if, if you right. have, then... that's Well, that's my kid's memory. I'm like, I was so excited. I'm like, I'm going to show him Superman, get him into comics, and yeah. uh, we started with that first movie, which is a terrible movie <laughs> to start your kids with. There's no action in it, and the only thing they remember is there's Superman's uh, wiener there. Right. Yeah, it's perfect. So we just get a lot of weird physical comedy. Right. There's we get the guy who's uh, the paint's falling on him. And right, he's a rich guy, so obviously you know he's needs to have paint fall on him. Yeah, and then a bucket, and then <laughs> then you know there's a mine for some reason. There's some gumballs that get kicked over. I don't know. We don't need to narrate no. this. There's going to be a pie fight at some point. Yeah, that's um, true. <laughs> this opening is the most bananas thing. And then every about two minutes, they throw up another part of the credit sequence. For just And the blind guy is still walking around. Yeah. So it's uh, Walks through a painting right here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there is. Th- this is the, one of the most peculiar openings you've ever seen for any. I don't think there's any hero movie that has this level of kind of bizarre craziness all all at once, yeah. I, I it, 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 it's so peculiar, but it does set the tone for what the movie's going to be, right? So, and it is basically, and as the credits are going, Richard Pryor has learned how to computer program. Yes, that's the montage you get here, right? Yeah, he goes to the School of Data Processing, and um, you've done some code work. Uh, yeah, life. yeah, and I can just say with certainty that nobody in this scene has any idea how computers work. <laughs> There's a lady asking questions that don't make sense. There's the instructor who makes no sense. They're just doing basic programming that Yeah. And Richard Pryor even says, I don't know how I just did what I did, but look at what I just did, which was That's how games are made. Print up a bunch Yeah, well I mean that's how computers work. You don't know what you've done and you just press a button and and all your program yeah. types of the screen and the constructor has no idea how he did what he did. But I, I just like the concept that computer programmers, uh, you know, are in the unemployment office and have no discernible skills. But as soon as they get in front of a computer, they're geniuses. Well, this is, this makes sense because we've heard all this, you know, as uh, jobs get taken away because of environmental regulations, you're supposed to learn how to code. If you watch this movie, you see it's really easy. So really yeah. you have to wonder what these lazy people are doing, not yeah. learning how to why, code. Why can't they just learn to code and be it, like Richard Pryor? It makes me think that a lot of the, the reporters and the politicians who have used that statement, pretty much their understanding of coding is from Superman 3. I think everybody's understanding of computers is based on Superman 3. Yes. yes. I think that is a fair statement. <laughs> so we, we get introduced uh, briefly to... Uh, sort of our villains. Our villains, who's uh, Ross Webster, his... Yeah. Uh, is Vera, his sister, who's yeah doesn't make sense why she's here, and Lorelai, who's the the pretty lady who sets off all the events. Yep, 
no idea why she's even involved. This is all. a weird trio. Yeah, yeah, and of, and of course, you know, we should say that you know they they wanted Gene Hackman, right. but instead they just invented Ross Webster. I don't think Ross Webster's in a comic character, or maybe afterwards. I don't think so. I, I don't recall I mean, some somebody He's in the an comments. Idiot, will tell by us. the way, I mean, yeah, he if you idiot. look at his plans and then what he tries to do, I mean, we'll we'll get into it, but it's like. We'll use the computers to do coffee beans, yeah. and then we'll take all the oil, and then we're going to launch missiles at Superman. Th those yeah. are his three plans. It doesn't have the sophistication of buying uh, short-selling GameStop stock. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't have. Or, that or same. buying desert property and turning it into beachfront property. Right. Yeah. No, yeah. That, that's clearly. This this movie though, why I think you've got to watch this and then watch it closely. It deserves multiple viewings. Is it? It is insane. For almost every scene, you, you get this uh, reintroduction of Daily Planet. Uh, Lois Lane is barely in this movie because she was angry that they uh, they got they switched directors. They switched yeah. directors, yep. so there's well, no. They mean they kept the same director, but they got rid of the Richard Donner. And right, they, they got rid of the Donner. Lester. Yeah, and and so we barely see her. So we got to get a storyline right. reason why she's leaving. She goes to Bermuda, obviously, with a to... tiny bikini, which she shows the entire office, which she carries around in a bag. Yeah, yeah, that's what you do. Questionable. Um, and so Clark sets off. He's going to go to Smallville to write the story about his his high school reunion. His that seems like a story that once again the Daily Planet has decided to cover. Well, this is the New York Times, in effect. Basically, that's what the Daily Planet is. The analogy is for the Times, and so it makes sense that they would want a kind of a headline story of him going to his reunion. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I I, I, I mean, again, they cover all sorts of weird stories as yeah. as we've discussed, like. But, Bombings in Paris and honeymoon adventures in Niagara Falls. Sure, I mean they no no part of any of this makes sense. Yeah, and um, they have the the bingo prize for the people sending the people to South America. Right. So this is how they're actually the the crazy part about this movie is even though nothing makes sense, like the opening sequence of this film, everything is connected in a in a in both a interesting and stupid way. Yeah. So they even the the old school kind of bingo. There, it's like a very nineteen sixties. Yeah, they see Lois is waving yep. around her bikini. Yep. Um, they are they're they're basically they're they're complaining about why can't this be more technology? I mean, right. what is the theme of this movie? Is it technology is bad, or like what is the computers is the will take over your body and make you do evil things? I think is okay. the lesson to be learned from this movie. That's uh, that may because <laughs> there's. There's so many different messages going. I mean, it's like, is it supposed to be? Yeah. Uh, you know, Clark is is reminiscing about his his home, and you can't forget your past. Or I, I don't know. It's it's yeah. very strange. So, all right. At so any rate, now Richard Pryor has been uh, hired by Websco Industries, which is the Webster yeah. company. This is the villain. He's there, and, and he's, he's working there. in like the some mainframe room. We yeah. This is where computer programmers go. Yeah. Yeah. And then he's complaining about his pay, which is about five bucks an hour. I calculated about five fifty. Yeah. Which in nineteen eighty four, that's still pretty low, I think. Yeah, it's still low, but, but I mean, you know, maybe, you know. So the, then he gets the idea of uh, taking half cents, or the the guy tells him that you know computers do the rounding and or, and you know they get rid of the half cent and they're yeah. keeping the half cent. And he, uh, it's also worth noting at this point because you see it at various parts in the movie. That this most of the scenes here are filmed in Canada. I think in um, in in it was either Quebec or Calgary. I don't. I think Calgary for a lot of these scenes, and so you you constantly see weird Canadian spelling for the, for 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 various stuff. It's it's you see it when they when they put program and other parts up on the wall. You'll you'll just notice it's it's you've got some French spellings for no apparent reason. This is a, a fun little thing in the background. Okay. So he he gets, does get this plan, which is the genius plan of. He's going all these half cents. He's going to take all the half cents and put them in his bank account. Right. And this is... And nobody sneaky. would notice. Right. Um, and so he's, a, he's an awesome computer programmer. He figures out a way to do this. He does it. And then he immediately buys a Ferrari. Right. I mean, we'll get to that. But this is basically the office... I mean, other other things have ripped this off. This is the office space plan. This mm -hmm. is all the other, other stuff. But the weird thing is, uh, you would think like... He gets a check for $85,000, and this is a weekly payroll situation. Right. So in order to get $85,000, they would have to have uh, 17 million half cents. Yeah. That's a big company. Or, or transactions, you know, just 
I, I don't think you're doing a weekly payroll for 17 million people. That seems. I mean, what company has 17 million people? As well, this is exactly so. The, the math Amazon here is very well. weird. It's like I think if you got the half cents, that you would, you know, it would have to be a smaller number. Everybody, everybody's off by an order of magnitude when they think of this plan. Yeah. I, well, it's also funny the uh, the way he does it is he basically goes into the computer and says, "Hey, take all those half cents and give it to me." And the computer says, "Okay." Yeah. Well, I mean, he disables all security first. Well, that's yeah, true. He I wrote, mean, obviously, he's a major hacker. He wrote disable all security. Yeah, yeah. And it said, "Okay." Right. That's what happens. Um, no. Okay. So yeah. So basically, he gets the money. He buys himself a Ferrari. We'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. But um, meanwhile, Clark is traveling to Smallville. Right. And for some reason, Jimmy is traveling as well. Didn't well, we? he's going to take pictures of the high school reunion. Yeah, but we don't see him later, do we? Well, that's because he uh, breaks his leg oh, in, the, that's in right. the fire. That's right. Yeah. So, so first of all, these firefighters and uh, policemen are totally inept in fighting this fire because, as you know, you don't put water on a chemical fire. Sure. But then there's also the uh, plot acid that gets introduced here, <laughs> where if the acid <laughs> is raised above a certain point, it becomes... The most deadliest thing on earth, apparently. Yeah, the most deadliest acid on earth, and it and can become a giant acid cloud that will kill the eastern seaboard. Yeah, that they actually say that. And but there's one scientist who's like, well, I'm I can't leave the acid because I'm just going to stay in this burning building where the acid is. Yeah, and try and keep it cool. Yeah. Which I mean, you have to respect like going down with the ship. The I amount like, of effort. I like the scene yeah. by the way. You're like, we need to sneak in. Right. And. They tell, like Jimmy tells Clark, they're both hiding behind a car. Right. And Jimmy tells Clark, hey, distract this guy. Yep. And Clark just stands there, and Jimmy proceeds to run just right in front of the policeman, yeah, yeah. who watches him and looks at him go. Yeah, they're like, well, I guess he's going in. So here they are spraying water on, on you know, once again, a chemical fire, which you probably yep. shouldn't do. No. You would think Superman could just blow it out. Yeah. I mean, he could just use his powers. Yep. But instead... Um, He's just standing around telling them, you know, what to do. And then he's trying to save these people by knocking down a chimney yeah. that they can slide down. But yeah, the, he makes a big... But the chimney is made slide. of metal, so it's probably very hot to slide down. Yeah, you would think... And then there's an explosion later, and, you know, yeah. why don't you just... Why don't you blow this thing up? Why don't you just blow... The, why don't you just take care of this, Superman? So, so eventually he does. He flies to a nearby lake. And then he freezes the lake. He fle free he picks it up and drops it. On once, the fire. Again, once again, dropping water on a chemical fire. Yeah. I'm not sure that this is the smartest thing, but <laughs> sure. He, he knows what he's doing. He's I, Superman. I think the key here is that if you if you figured out computers from this movie, fine, but but don't don't try and figure out fire yeah. safety. Stop, drop, movie. and roll, kids. Stop, drop, and roll. Yeah, <laughs> stop, drop, and roll. <laughs> See, again, they're sliding down this metal tube. We're watching this movie. Yeah. It's like there's a metal tube next to a fire that he's let them slide down to escape. I, I think we, we won't do we shouldn't do but this is where maybe we should do these uh, these retrospectives and let people should just uh, start the movie and we can be the audio track because it is this again I got to stress here you've got to watch these movie. guys they got they was too close to the explosion that guy's still down yeah he's dead yeah he's probably um, dead and no, now Jimmy's going to put himself in danger he's going to break his leg and then that's that sets up why Jimmy can't right. take photos of well and, and again Superman is helping Jimmy instead of putting out the fire right which. Again, what are the priorities here? It's it's all very strange. But he does dump that lake. We don't see like massive amount of fish flopping around on the ground. I I, I think that would well, have the been... fish would have been frozen in the yeah they would yeah. have been frozen in the in the glacier. But it, then they melted as it falls, yeah. and that would have been. I mean, right. we're in a movie. They would have been dropping fish on dump the fire gags. Yeah, I, right. I think I, why you didn't go for that visual gag, I don't know. But anyway, so we finally get uh, past this scene yeah. which is kind of a lengthy yeah, scene. I'm just gonna fast forward now in fairness it's it's nice that this movie is trying to give us some action in the first 20 minutes it yeah, is different. yeah no no it's definitely you, you save the guy from drowning in his car yeah and then you're fighting a fire yeah. so those are the those are the stakes that Superman deals with and you've got some weird green screen lines around Superman yep at various times He's, uh, all right so we're you do see his hair color change so anyway he does he saves the acid which is turning color in real time i mean the effects on this is ab are absolutely terrible but you know still yeah it's like how big is this that he can get that much leverage from lifting the ice uh, from that corner yeah know? i mean it and feels and like I, the ice would just break. i don't the ice would melt that quickly just falling through the sky i mean i think yeah i feel like he would just flatten the plant with a giant iceberg by dropping it on it but yeah. apparently it melts and then they get rain yeah and then 
it rains for a couple minutes because that's how rain works. That's, that is how rain works and puts out all the fire. So yeah. all right. there you go. So Superman, uh, Jimmy, of course, can't go anywhere. Um, Superman yeah. is going to head to Smallville now. But I believe now the master plan of Richard Pryor is uncovered. Right. So they're, they're gonna, we're going to introduce uh, Ross Webster. He's going to say, hey, 85 grand yeah. got stolen, which again, 17 million half cents. Yeah, I mean, I would think that it just logically, if uh, if you stole from Jeff Bezos eighty five thousand dollars, would he notice? Well, you would think somebody would notice, and then they would say, "Oh, it went to this guy who got the eighty five thousand dollar check written out to his name." Yeah, I don't. Th I think it yeah. would be it would be easy to detect this. Right. Uh, well, while they're solving that problem, of course, we do get to high school reunion. That's where you pretty much become clear that Clark is not writing any story, but is really just kind of horny, <laughs> like. He's dancing. He's helping Lana clean up. We get his. Uh, yeah. Well, we get the drunken guy, the uh, sure. the ex, the ex uh, guy. What's the his ex name? boyfriend? Yeah, yeah. the uh, was it Chip? Who is it? Uh, we'll get his name. In I don't know. He's he's a he's Brad. a Brad. Yeah, Brad, Brad Wilson, all state quarterback, and uh, good old Brad. He's just. I like how he's just getting hammered right in the yeah in the. He's got in. some good scenes. I don't know who he is, but he's he does some good work in this movie. <laughs> well, it fits everything else. I, I think. <laughs> There's lots of uh, really ridiculous uh, dancing and some again some very, yeah, very awkward stuff right uh, so, here. There's yeah. this long clip where their DJ it's just a shot of his crotch yeah. and he's he's dancing. Why why they chose to do that is a, a big mystery. Yeah, yeah. This is um, but what's funny is when I think about going to a high school reunion, which I will never do. Uh, I always think this is what it would be like, and this is why I will never go. Yeah, I. This looks terrible. I don't want to hang out with anybody I knew in high school that I don't already hang out with. Exactly. So. Yeah, screw those people. Yeah. So anyway, so. Yeah. So Lana's a big idiot, and uh, yes. she matches Clark for being an idiot. Yeah. So they go together. You know, yeah. nice. It is the perfect couple, really. Yeah. Um, and of course, that actress went on to be the mom in Smallville. Right. Yeah. You know? She she was becoming Superman royalty at this point. She ends this movie uh, getting a job at the Daily Planet. Oh yeah. That's which right. is. Peculiar because then she never showed. Well, I mean, we go into Superman four after this, so it's like it's not like the franchise was yeah. healthy and doing great. But it like, feels like there could have been like a you know a triangle between her and Lois and and Lana. You know the yeah yeah yeah. It feels like they been. they could have that could have been you know some issues in Superman four, but no, it's sure. just that nuclear guy. Yeah, well, it's an opportunity wasted. Yeah. Um, all right, so this, this you get a very a long dull. Uh, yeah, this is this sequence. is the part where you want to fast forward. Uh, if yeah. you're a network TV, you just cut this whole section out. Yeah, this is the wasted part of the film. Uh, yeah. We do then we uh, but we put at this point you're really missing Richard Pryor. So yeah. we get to Richard Pryor and he's he's bought the Ferrari. He's uh, he's kind of uncovered. He knows he's caught. They summon him to their office. Yeah. So um, I like by the way that he gets his first check for the extra money, and he is completely shocked that he's getting the eighty five thousand dollars. And he, you'd think as a programmer, he would have been able to count how much he would, again, the yeah. 17 million uh, paychecks that apparently he's stealing from. I also like how a Ferrari apparently costs $85,000. No, I bet that checks out for 1984. It doesn't? I, I don't know. Maybe. I mean, you, you assume it's at least, you know, double now. So, I mean. It, it is, it is all, it, it's all odd, but he gets, he gets caught, he gets summoned up to the office um, yeah, so now we get the introduction about 30 minutes into, you know, Ross Webster, uh, Zavira, and Lorelai. And then I like how Lorelai, by the way, she's wearing a sweater with cherries hanging off of it. And the cherries are, are positioned <laughs> appropriately. So they, they dangle well, and they, they bounce. So around. the dynamic here is very weird because I think, again, Ross Webster is an idiot. Yeah. I think his sister is also an idiot, but sometimes she actually has plans, but she, I don't know what her deal is. She yeah. tries very hard to please her brother, which doesn't seem like a very good dynamic. Like her and Lorelai constantly fight. And then Lorelai is sometimes very smart and sometimes very dumb. Well, and she's, they, she's playing kind of both. She's pretending to be dumb, but right. it's, it's not clear why. Well, it's, I, I, I mean... Like, like she, she's, you know, they, they show her various times, like reading science books. Right. And yeah, then yeah. They, philosophy they, books. Yeah. The brother comes in and she switches it up for like a Cosmo. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, it, no, I mean, I think she's probably of the three of them. She's the one that makes the most sense. Yeah. I, 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 I yeah, she does, but it doesn't, 
It doesn't mean, I don't know. It, it's all very weird. So I, I do like But, but it's Pryor. a weird dynamic that her and the sister are both fighting to try and please Ross Webster the most. Yeah. Like, that's a just a weird dynamic. It, it's very weird. Yeah, they're all having sex. Uh, yeah. So um, I, Richard Pryor shows up. I like how in addition to suddenly showing up in a Ferrari, he also just parks right in the middle of the road. Like, you yeah, show yeah. him like, he, skidding around parking stops. He could have parked. But he decides not to. He just he just parks right in the middle of the they, road. They they say, well, only an idiot would you know, yeah, come out. And it's like then he shows up at the Ferrari and yeah. acts like an idiot. It's all very funny because he's playing music. Um, we get back to Smallville while the plot is uncovered. There, Clark is trying to teach Lana's son how to bowl. Yeah, he's and, just not a very strong bowler. And uh, Brad is there for some reason. Because, and he's drunk because well, there's only like one bar in Smallville apparently, and it right. is uh, the bowling alley. And, and Brad basically shows up, and he's hammered, and he's kind of just, trying to tell the kid how yeah, to bowl. He's just emasculating him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Clark is like, ah, you should let him do it. He'll figure it uh, out. Ah, his way is the best. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. 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 His way. Yeah. So Clark steps up to kind of help him, and yep. he blows the ball. He sneezes, and it blows the ball, and it shatters all the pins. Yeah, it, it obliterates the bowling alley. Yeah, right. Like, this is Superman. We see Superman being a dick later, but this basically ends the game. Like, do we think the bowling ball, like, just keeps going, like, through the back wall, the center block wall? <laughs> I'm picturing, and, like, just murdering people yeah, yeah. as it spirals out of control through Smallville. Um, this this is an indication that Superman is is a dick, I, I think. Because <laughs> not only is he making Brad look funny, but he's also, like, terrifying the children. Right. He's, he, yeah, I mean, I don't, you know... Yeah. I, I, I don't understand, really... Because it's not like he's going to obliterate the, the pins the next time he throws the ball. So yeah, I don't know exactly. You're, I mean, you're getting the kid's confidence up yeah. by having him obliterate the thing. But, you know. Yeah, I also like how the mom and everybody else is like, wow, that's weird. Yeah, that's totally normal that yeah. the bowling ball went 100 miles an hour and the destroyed yeah. the wind. I think Lana's like, wow, he's yeah. getting better. Yeah. Like, cause like this is some kind of normal thing. Also, Clark is standing behind the kid when he sneezes. So yeah. shouldn't the kid have also gone sailing through the wall? <laughs> yeah, that would have been that would have been fun. <laughs> that would have yeah. No, it, but it just proves that Superman can direct, you know, his blowing powers. Yeah. And which he probably might've... should have put that fire out with. <laughs> might have used earlier. Yeah. So uh Richard Pryor gets summoned to the boss's office. He's yeah. caught. But the good news is he's not in trouble. Right. Because his boss has determined that because he can embezzle money using computers, yeah. he can probably use his computer skills to redirect satellites and ships. Right. Which, so which that makes to, sense. To raise and lower the price of coffee or whatever. Sure. That is their plan, is to uh, affect the price of coffee, not by you know working together with people on Reddit, no. but by... Um, <laughs> By making well, these, well, no, no. So he's these, taking over a weather satellite right. and shooting a laser at Columbia. Yeah, it's it's which is not something that weather satellite. This is why people think that again. We've learned the lesson that you know people learned everything about computers from watching this movie. Yeah, this is why people think there are space lasers that can control the weather if they Jew watch this movie. I and think they, Jewish space lasers <laughs> that Quanon uh, people again. Yeah, this movie not real. No. <laughs> Let's just be very I, clear about this. It's it, This movie, I think, is... I, the more you watch it, the more you realize how much of current life <laughs> people are, are taking this movie as the template for how the world works. Yeah. Because big tech. Yeah, Richard Pryor is big tech. So he builds a giant computer. Richard Pryor solves all Jack, his problems. Is Jack Dorsey. Yes. Well, yeah. something. Yeah. So, yeah. So they, they set about their plan. Uh, yep. they're, again, Richard Pryor is, is in a completely different movie. Um, but yeah. you know, we, we get their, their Columbia plan. It is he gets to make fun of the sister a little bit. It is kind of unclear if Richard Pryor is actually aware that he's in a movie with Superman yeah. at all. I right. mean, well, no, at this point they send him to Smallville so that he can, uh, they can't trace where the computer is being run from. So he suggests we go somewhere, you know, somewhere small, crappy, somewhere goes, crappy. Yeah. yeah. So he heads off to Calgary. Right. Um, uh, and I mean, Smallville and yeah. then... We uh, we get the Daily Planet, you know, some people win. So this is all, this movie keeps introducing the yeah. weirdest stuff. So you get this contest winner, Mr. and Mrs. Murray Stokas. And Stalks. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There we go. That it's, makes sense. It all fits. It all fits. So they're heading to Columbia, right. the dream of a lifetime. Yep. And, uh, and, and basically... Yep, they're they're going to go to Columbia on their on their trip, yeah. and uh, so then we go back to Smallville. 
They're having a picnic. And they're having a picnic because that's a thing normal people do. That's what small they, town people do. They go to a field and the kid runs off into a field with the dog. Right. And immediately falls prey to a... He falls over and hits his head. Yeah, he trips on a rock, and then he's about to get ground up by some kind of tractor. Right. Yeah. Right. No, and, and I think there, there's a little bit of work here with uh, Lana and uh, and Clark here. I think he uh, eats the dog food at some point because yeah. he's not sure what the food is. Yeah. And Superman is funny. He doesn't know food. Yeah. 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 yeah he, that's right. He eats some dog food. And then yeah. uh, Lana's like, that's gross. But she's stupid, so she doesn't really care. <laughs> That he's eating dog food. I like how he goes back multiple times to the dog food. Like he has, I think. Two, well, he says, uh, you know, it tastes good. It tastes three good. bites. And he continues to eat it after she tells him it's dog food. She, he continues to like dip his finger in. Like it's super gross. In the time well, of he's, COVID, you don't he's eat food this Well, I mean, he's Superman. He, he, his stomach can take this stuff. That's they, true. He's, he's who got, knows what they're eating on Krypton? He's got antibodies. So, right. all right. So, so the kid is just running wild <laughs> off into a farmland that is being, you know, mowed down by the, the, you know, whatever yeah. those. And, and ironically, Lana Combines. is talking about how she's a good parent. During yeah, this. sure. Yeah. Which, you know, that all checks out. Yeah. So Superman saves him. Um, we're in the, in the dumbest possible way. Right. right? No, he, he uh, you know, she needs to go fix her car. He uh, sees that, uh, you know, the kid is, is injured. He flies off. He grabs him. And the kid's like, hey, I just got saved by Superman. But I think he destroys the tractor. He, well, I mean, he may be. I mean, I think he puts his arm in it and just kind of grinds it to a halt. Yeah. I mean, that can't be good. And you could just, like, pick up the kid and fly away with him. But he yeah, decided yeah. to do some some damage to, like, what it has to be a poor farmer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, I it mean, all fits. you know, it's, so, it's the big, it's big farm. It's big farm. Yeah. yeah everybody it's knows true it. big farm. They can learn how to code. Right. Yeah. So then, uh, you know, then he comes back as Clark and he has the dog. And then we have what I think is one of the best scenes in this movie <laughs> yes, where, um, you know, Richard Pryor has made his way to Smallville. He, he got the crazy suit uh -huh. and he meets Brad at the uh, Websco Wheat King um, industry where yeah. Brad is just he's sleeping. Asleep. He's yeah. a drunk yeah. and he's the janitor. And well, uh, he's going to install uh, the bar. Is he a janitor or is he a, he's a security guard? Well, maybe. Both. What's what's the difference? I mean, uh, he was asleep. That's was, all we know. Yeah. And he wants to come in, but Brad's not into it. And but but he then he's like, gonna, I gotta install this bar. Yeah, he's got a briefcase full of booze. Yeah, I love I love the outfit. I love the the introduction of the outfit where he he walks into Smallville and he just looks at, at the outfit in the window and he's like, What the the yeah. fuck are these people wearing? <laughs> and then buys it. And then he buys it and wears it in the scene, which yeah. I think is is just great. So yeah, so then they're gonna get drunk. Yeah. And uh, at some point, Richard Pryor is wearing a giant foam hat. Yeah, um, for for no reason. He just—I don't know where he found it. I, but he's—they're both drunk. They—he's got the—he's got the giant foam hat, and um, it is kind of peculiar that this scene is happening at night, and then they keep flashing back to Clark and Lana during the day. Uh, but but that's all right. Nah. It, it doesn't well, make sense. They they do that at least once. But anyway, they're drunk, and yep, and Brad it's, gets. Yeah. He gets super drunk and he's like, you know, he there's not enough vodka in this. And he's like, do you, do you ever pass out? And he's like, nope, I never pass out. And then he passes out. Yeah. And then, you know, Richard Pryor's like, I'm not even drunk. Yeah. And he's also kind of drunk. Sure. And so then. Um, They've got to basically to turn on the computer. Right. Get two key cards two keys. simultaneously. Right. And so he's drunk. He gets Brad who's passed out mm -hmm. and he just. You know, he, he gets, rolls them around weekend of Bernie style. Yep. Yeah. I like I like that the uh, there's a janitor closet and again a Kentucky Fried Chicken um, product yeah. placement, yeah. but that the janitor closet is like marked private, and then the computer room is like just some other random room. It's like <laughs> they know their priorities. Well, he he thinks you know the janitor closet. He opens that up and he's like, oh, okay, I'll go to the less yeah. secure room. <laughs> <laughs> I, so he he ties up Brad. Yep. So he can get the, his his the, hand to put in the key card at right. the same time he puts in his key card. Yep. He can't reach both key cards. When you think Brad wakes up, do you think his wrist is like tied and he's sitting in the computer room? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, he's yeah. just like, wow, I had a great night. Yeah, I, I, I also picture Brad doesn't really – this is an unusual event for him. So this does work. Yeah. He gets the keys inserted. Right. And this allows him to turn on the computer. Right. But then he does a bunch of random hijinks yes. with computers. Before getting to the weather satellite, I think there's an ATM. 
Yeah, so you get a bunch of awesome uh, computer shit. We get on. the, uh, what is it, the stoplights? Yes, and the stoplights that just have both people. It's like he does commands, and then all the computers kind of turn on and hum. And, and Because all computers are connected, and uh, this is how they work. Yes, and, and as they're doing that, um, it is like it, it's got a bunch of crazy stuff. Like the the, the, the wife is making orange juice or right. something. And then there's he gets the Bloomingdale bill. You gotta assume yeah. this happened weeks later after I guess for like sixteen. Yeah, the Bloomingdale bill is like six one hundred seventy six thousand dollars, <laughs> and the, the the husband just slams a grapefruit in his wife's face and grinds it up, and yeah, she doesn't seem perturbed by this. Well, this is a regular occurrence. <laughs> I mean, they're on their own sitcom, so. <laughs> You know. I want I want the spinoffs of all these things. The uh, the stop the you know the, he gets the crosswalk going where everybody is going at the same time yep. and then like then the, the two stoplights just people. start fighting each other. Yeah, the, the the walking guy and the stop guy in the crosswalk. Uh, one like climbs down into the other one, and the two of the the two things just start fighting each other. Yeah, yeah, it climbs up. Yeah, no, there there really could have been some eighties music behind this that would have made it a great montage, but. You know, enough of this. We got to, yeah. we got to. I like how the walking person gets the don't walking person down and then just murders him. Well, yeah, it's a submission hold. It's, you know, <laughs> really good technique. So they finally get to the Vulcan weather satellite and he basically, he's getting the Columbia weather to go haywire. Right. By and shooting a laser at it. By shooting a laser at it. A Jewish space laser. I, I wouldn't know about that. Yeah. Well, that's what they say in the, in the Congress. Uh, anyway, so this happens to be the country where the Daily Planet employees got yeah. a, uh, a tour of. Right. And, and it, so it looks a lot like Hawaii, if I'm really honest. I don't think Colombia actually has like trees like that. No, it no. It seems I, very tropical for... Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, they're, they've got an old church here. And for some reason, they're at the old church as tourists. Right. But they, the entire, like, it suddenly there's mass flooding. Yeah. And... Uh, it just feels, uh, and the way they shoot this is they show us, you know, what's going on in Columbia, and then they cut back to the New York scene where uh, Ross uh, Webster is skiing, and they're watching TV on top of the building. This, the, the funny but they don't actually film any Superman action. Well, they they had they did film it, but yeah. they they let Richard Pryor explain what happened in, rather than show it. Right, which is very. It, it just feels like they, they... It's an interesting choice. Well, I feel like they just ran out of money or... Well, they might have because the scene of... A lot, well, a lot of people remember this ski slope on top of a building scene. Um, supposedly took over a month to make and cost them a, a... Was the most expensive set piece that they had in this movie um, for reasons that are completely mysterious. Well, it's because movie. that snow is actually cocaine. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> that would explain so much in this movie. That's the Columbia connection. Everybody yeah. can see that. It is. They actually do reference that uh, Columbia has two exports. Yeah. And they say coffee is one of them. Yeah, I do like that. There is a very subtle, you know, cocaine reference. They don't mention the other one. It's funny because this building ski slope is easily the, uh, this would be the shittiest skiing experience ever. Yeah, yeah. It's not very far. It's like and, 50 feet. Up. And you got to keep that cold. And then... And you know how the scene ends is Richard Pryor skis off the end of the building. Right. And he just skis all the way down. You know, the building is apparently diagonal the whole way. Yeah. Uh, somehow. It, it, it yeah. <laughs> Once again, we get the brother, like, he, he kicks some yeah. snow into the cleavage of his sister. There, there's no, no, some, not as Lorelei. Lorelei, yeah. yeah, yeah. There, there's some very weird stuff going on. No, no, it's like they're, the, the t two girls are once again fighting for his affection. So now they're coming up with their oil scheme. Yeah. Because they're like, hey, we just watched the news and Columbia got a hurricane. So yeah. our plan has succeeded, obviously, so we can turn off the news and not watch it any further. Right. And so then Richard Pryor comes in and says, I, I am not responsible for Superman coming in and fixing all that Columbia stuff. Yeah. And they're like, what? We didn't watch the next five minutes. It feels like the news could have led with Superman saving the day. But yeah. It, they, they really, you fake, know. They fake newsed it. Yeah, uh, okay. Yeah. Well, this is yeah, the, who knows the what channel answer. they were watching, but, you know, they didn't tell the whole story. They were watching Newsmax. Yeah, all right. Um, so then, you know, he has to explain, you know, he gets his cape on, he, yeah. you know, gets around, he gets on the skis, and they, they come he, up with the he plan. He pretends to be Superman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so then he's like, this is where they, they come up in order to get their oil plan to succeed. 
Yes. They need to kill Superman. Yeah, they need to take him out. So they, what they need to do is find some kryptonite. Right. But there's no kryptonite anywhere. Obviously not, because Lex got it all in the previous movie. Yeah, or he, he used it all. Who knows? So he's got to make some synthetic kryptonite. And right. what? But how do they? How do they get the formula for kryptonite? Well, what can they point the la- the laser satellite out into s- the the yep. weather satellite out into space and shoot a laser? Yeah. And then they analyze a, a the Jewish results. Space laser. Yeah. Again, those lasers are you know they can track the weather. They yeah. can change the weather. How they can computers work. They can look at other galaxies and read the ingredients. Yes. Right. So he that they that is how you how it works. You get ingredients list. So he basically is going to go make some kryptonite. Yeah. Um, what can't computers do? Yeah, it yeah. Is, we're but, an hour into this movie already. Yeah, so much has happened. All right, but again, it's two different movies. It's Superman is in one movie, and you know Richard Pryor is in this different movie. Now we're going to start you know mixing a little we're bit. Slowly going to bring them together. Yeah. So Pryor uh, heads back to uh, go fix the computers. I like how Lorelai's uh, top gets lower and lower to the point that at the end of the scene, it's unzipped down to her belly button. I mean, it was the 80s, man. And plus, they're on a mountain of cocaine. They're on a mountain of cocaine. Yeah. Exactly. That's why everybody's so energetic. That's how he survived that fall, frankly. Yep. So, all right. So, we there, get... We there he goes. There he goes. He's going down the mountain. Yeah, he goes... He and goes, then he just lands in traffic. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's completely okay having skied off the top of a building. Right. They don't really address that he just escaped from the top of the building on skis and yeah is just totally fine that's it it all right. checks out right okay so they they get the uh they get the recipe for kryptonite yep um richard Pryor, for whatever reason he's able to do that from the main office I right now i mean now he can use the weather satellite from the main office now clark is headed back to his office to he's writing the story he's typing up how he he nailed lana I mean, that sounds like a great story I think, I think that the that, Daily Planet needs to cover. That had to be the story that he covered. But but Lana's like, hey, my kid's birthday is coming up, and uh, I kind of told him Superman was coming. Yeah, like any good mom. Right. Yeah. And uh, and Clark is like, I think Superman can come to your birthday. Yeah. Uh, just tell him I'm good friends with Superman. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's nothing going on in the world. Superman can come yeah. to the birthday. So yeah. it's uh, – no, I, I think, as I recall, Ricky was bragging to his his friends that he was Superman would show up. Yeah. And so this is his mom who's the an awesome mom. Yeah. Who basically is not taking the opportunity to uh, you know teach their kid not to lie, but instead right. calls up Clark. Well, to be fair, she wants to go with Clark. She does. Yeah. So she wants- she's just looking for any excuse to uh, Yeah. But I don't I mean, I don't know. So Clark's thinking I'm ready to go back and uh, and nail Lana some more. The Daily Planet employees who were Physically devastated. Down no, no, they weren't employees. They won the contest. Right. Oh, yeah, they won the contest. Right. They are happy. Uh, they're gonna. They're gonna sue the Daily gonna Planet sue. for sending them to South America and yep. being in the middle of a hurricane. Yeah. Well, that, that all checks out. Yeah, all right. um, meanwhile, uh, they have made some kryptonite. Yeah. Um, right. And and it's green kryptonite. It's green. But it's you know in the comics it becomes either you know red or. Red or black. Black, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, so, but the, the key here is that Richard Pryor, there's a missing ingredient. Right. It's unknown. And, and so he needed to put something in there. Yeah. And so he decides tar. Yeah. Because of he's holding a pack of cigarettes. Yeah. That all makes yeah. sense. So uh, he, he gets his kryptonite. It's been made with tar for the missing ingredient. We're not sure what that's going to do. Yeah. Um, Richard Pryor now needs to go deliver the kryptonite to Superman. They know yep. Superman's hanging out in Calgary. I mean, right. Smallville. In Smallville, yes. And he is uh, he's basically going to right. dress so up like his, an army man. Well, his yeah. So his the Ricky's uh, birth is his name Ricky. Ricky, I I, Ricky I'm right going to call him Ricky. All right. Yeah. So his birthday party has turned into like a town event where they want to thank Superman for uh, the you know saving them from the fire and yeah. everything else. And then uh, at some point, Richard Pryor shows up. And as an army guy, he's cosplaying a over-the-top General Patton. Right. And, uh, and Vera's the driver, and he's just making stuff up. And it's a pretty good scene. It's yeah. not bad. He gives a crazy speech, yeah. and he gives Superman the kryptonite. But the kryptonite uh, does not work. Right. He just gives it to him, and Superman's like, uh, thanks. Thanks. This is nice. Thanks for the green rock. Right. But the, you get, do get some ominous music that maybe some bad stuff's happening. Richard Pryor's disappointed because... It seems like uh, this his plan didn't work. Right. He gives a long speech, actually. Um, yeah. No, I mean they just let him go and they, you know, edited down. So. Yeah. 
So again, this is this is just you have Will Ferrell in your Batman movie. You're just gonna have to let Will Ferrell do some stuff. And yeah, you're just gonna. Say, I'm telling you, you absolutely need to put Will Ferrell in your Batman movie. But um, anyway, we if we get Pete Davidson now. It's the, the, the problem. Um, there's a weird fly that keeps showing up during this whole scene. Yeah, I mean, they're outside. Yeah, and so he's like, well, I, don't, I don't know, it didn't work. Yep. So and then uh, Superman goes back to uh, Lana's house. Yeah, and he's like. He's you know. just he's he's hanging out with Lana, being kind of creepy. He's kind yeah. of uh, oh yeah, this is a good this is a good line from from Ross. He's like, I gave you something simple like kill Superman, and you couldn't do it for me. Yeah, yeah, the boss is a dick. He's it's like oh Richard Pryor's alarmed by this. Is yeah. the gravy train of skiing off rooftops is over? But Superman's like looking kind of hungover and yeah. crappy. And what they learn is that there's been some level of disasters. Right. There's, there's like a truck hanging off a bridge. What, so where and is they, the kryptonite at this point? I, it just, it's gone. Like he just got exposed to it and... it's He's stuck now. And now he's this yeah. guy. Now he's this guy. Right. He. Uh, what I like is, is there's a truck hanging off a bridge and they're like, ah, Superman's over at Lana's house. There's a tie on the door. Yep. So let's call up Lana to tell her to get Superman over here to save this, this yeah, truck. Yeah, it, it feels like they could just yell Superman and he would yeah. hear them. But Superman's like, eh, there's no problem. I and got so time. I got time. He then sits next to Lana and then kind of creepily... Yeah, he's, he gets really creepy in this. And this is the yeah. turn, you know, to uh, Dark Superman. Yeah, he Harvey Weinstein's her a little bit. Um, and she's like, well, I'm not sure. Well, and how many how many other comics have done the... Uh, I mean, or movies even have done the uh, the... the Evil Superman. Well, I mean, you got Spider Man three. Sure. Are there any others where the well, the, the oh, good guy is like by the third movie the the good guy has just decided well I got to be evil for a while in or, the in the TV shows a lot but I don't think yeah. in the movies I, I there there haven't been that many you know good guy decides to just be creepy and bad but this sets yeah. off uh, again one of my favorite parts in the film right Superman being a dick. Yeah. So he does fly over to try and save this this car, but right. the, the, he's there too late. The truck falls over. The people get away. Yeah. And there's no, you know, there's nobody dies. Right. But they're like, hey, if you had gotten here just a minute sooner, you would have been able to save that truck. Yeah. The the, the cops are kind of. It's dicks. a truck. Yeah. It's like, oh, dude, <laughs> thanks for nothing. Yeah. Superman. You're putting that on Superman. And Superman's kind of, you know, rightfully I think pissed. So he yeah. flies off and decides. Screw it! It's time to be a dick. Yeah, so he uh, straightens the uh, the Tower of Pisa. What was I like it? how that's his first go to. He just the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Yeah, right once there. again, he can just fly across the ocean whenever yeah. he wants. And Superman's like, you know what? I'm going to straighten this thing out. Yeah, I feel like he would just break that building in half. And he's he's looking angry about yeah. it. Like he he did. I agree that the building would not doesn't. That's not how it works. That's not how buildings work. Everybody no. masonry. So no, he that's not how it works. he straightens it out and then he gives kind of a little like sneer smile. It's like hey, guys. and then he waves at the guy selling the Leaning Tower of Pisa statues. Like, right. And then he, he's like, he breaks it because he's like, oh, I can't sell these anymore. Yeah, I can't sell these things. I feel like he could still sell those. He can. And immediately the Leaning Tower of Pisa statue guy. Yeah, it's like these like, Italian stereotype guys. Yeah. I feel like the casting call for that was, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but let's see, what else did he do? He goes well, to the Olympics. Yeah, so, so I mean, instantly we get like news headlines of Superman is a dick. Yeah, it's like Time Magazine. So he goes to the Olympics. The Olympics is an awesome scene, right? Because it's a lot of buildup. A lot of buildup. Yeah, you, you basically get yeah. this uh, athlete who's been traveling around the world with the Eternal Flame, and Superman just kind of hangs out, lets him. He yawns a little bit. He's like, "Oh yeah, yeah." He lets the guy climb all the way up to the to light the torch, and yep. then Superman just blows it out. Right, and then everybody's like, "Well, I guess that athlete is jerk." Yeah, and. <laughs> It is, uh, it's some good comedy. So, yeah. so once again, we get uh, shots of, uh, the, the, our villains are really happy about this. They've yep. realized. They've that, realized that they've changed Superman. They've made him a bad guy. Right. Um, and so then they're going to use Lorelai to seduce him. Well, not, so first off. Well, yeah. We now they they, about the oil tankers. Right. So now they're going to get all the oil tankers and program them to sit in the middle of the ocean. Yeah, and, and that's going to drive up the price of oil, and he's going to come rich somehow. Again, right. is, and they're going to they're going to stop all the oil pumps in America. This and is our GameStop. Program them to never start again, because that is once again a thing all computer terminals can do. That's it's computers can do anything if you just know how to code. Right. So they do that, and uh, but they're worried that Superman is going to somehow save the day, even though he's evil. Right. So they get. Uh, 
one of the tankers is like, screw this, I am not going to. Oh, right. And then that's what they, they get Lorelai up on the Statue of Liberty. Right. She's going to seduce Superman to go yeah. there and, and like but, punch a hole in the oil tanker. Right. And she's like, well, before we do anything, you got to go move that oil tanker. Yeah. And Superman's horny, so he right. does it. Richard Pryor at this point has unveiled that not only is he a computer genius, he, he's actually a computer hardware genius yeah, as well. Yeah. And he's created via napkins and cigarette wrappers the ultimate computer. Now, right. this is brainy. Because this is, right. So this is his idea that uh, if, you're, if I'm going to do this evil stuff for you, you've got to build me this awesome computer. Yeah. I mean, it, of course. Why wouldn't you want to build a computer? And the computer it can do anything, according to Richard Pryor. Now, why... They need a computer can do anything when they're using regular old computers here that can reroute satellites. I and why understand. would you put that computer in the Grand Canyon? That, <laughs> that is the. We'll get to that. Well, yeah. I mean, we're we're coming up to the. Uh, we're coming to, up to the conclusion. We're coming up to the third act where yeah. uh, they're just shooting missiles at Superman and then so, the robots. So the oil stops. Right. Superman uh, gets horny. He flies into the oil tanker. He punches a hole in the side of it. Yep. And uh, then he's like, "I got to fly back to." You know, get that, you know, you know, bring, I don't know what I want to say here. Anyway, he, he basically punches a hole in. Yeah, then he makes out with Lorelai. Yep. Yeah, he then heads back to Lorelai, heads into her apartment, yep. and they, they, it kind of fades out. Yeah, I mean. Like, Superman, Superman yep. definitely consummated that relationship. Then we have, uh, you know, we have gas shortage. People are fighting over gas. Right, and this is where... Um, Richard Pryor, you know, sees this and he's like, well, maybe I've done a bad thing. Yeah, it's it, none of the other things uh, have caused this, yeah. but, but the gas shortage has made Richard Pryor suspect he's on the right, <laughs> the wrong side of history. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. He is joined Quanin. Uh, so let's see. So Lana wants to go. Uh, she wants to go to Smallville. Yeah. She's going to move. She, she wants to. No, she wants to go to Metropolis or Metropolis. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, and, she's, uh, she's done with this small town. Superman, meanwhile, is just sitting in a bar flicking peanuts drunk yeah he's he's drunk and he's flicking peanuts into the mirror and then just blow, just burns it down with his heat vision right yep he's just drunk he's just slamming you yeah. know whatever and everybody uh having watched superman destroy stuff decides and his costume's gotten all dirty and crappy too yep um the 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 civilians are like boo superman boo like like how dare I, you i would be concerned superman would burn everybody alive but that's not a problem um but yeah so he gets he confronts ricky and ricky's like you know i, thought I believed in, in you yeah you're just in a slump and so then he flies off and he goes to a junkyard and then we have superman fighting uh clark kent himself yeah he he splits his body splits into two right this is a this, this is, is another the, thing that happens from time to time i guess sure in this movies. is the black kryptonite it's effect. showing the inner you know, struggle effect. that is the external yes. in the movie. Yes. And it, they have weird powers. Like like Clark seems not strong, but then... Indestructible. Indestructible at the same right. time. Yeah. It's, it's a little unclear. Jerk Superman is like, ah, screw you, Superman. Again, this this whole bit feels a lot like... This goes on for like 13 minutes. Yeah. This, this, is, this fight. And there's actually some good stuff in it. But again... He throws them into, you know, plot acid once again. There's always a tub of acid somewhere. Everyone every, knows every there's junkyard. just a plot, there's a bunch of acid laying around. Yeah. You know. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it, it's, it's, a, this is, it's a weird and, and terrible scene in a lot of ways, but it's, it's funny. It, this, all this, again, I, I, the reason why I like this, I think, so much is it really does remind you of a lot of the 70s Superman comics that made really no... This was during the time period when uh, Supergirl was dating a horse. Uh, this, this fits right in with that era of comics. How do you date a horse? I, it, it, the horse had a crush on her, and then... Oh, well, that explains it. Yeah, she kind of commented the super horse. It was, well, we'll get more into this when we do the Supergirl movie review. Is there a horse in the Supergirl movie? There's not, but... You know, they're probably. Oh, I don't know been. that I want to see this movie. Yeah. Anyway, they do fight, and the fight ultimately results in uh, basically in Clark winning. Yeah, he he jumps out of a compactor and he uh, strangles himself to death, yeah. and then he his evil Superman disappears, and then he's back to normal Superman. Right. He he basically rips off his shirt, and he's got the Superman costume, and he's not. 
crappy. It is Superman murdering himself, though. He does choke right. himself to yeah. death. Right. He flies off. and He, he fixes the oil spill and he, the tanker. Yeah, it is It is an interesting dynamic where he, he flies back and he blows the oil back into the tanker. Yeah, I don't think you can do that. No. But, I mean. Well, why not? Yeah. Yeah, sure. He's Superman. He blows the oil back in the tanker. He repairs the side of the ship. He sends the oil tanker on its way, which will stop the oil crisis. Yeah. Just uh, the one tanker. Just we'll, the one tanker. That's we'll all it is. You know. Yeah. I mean, I mean, hell, uh, in the grand scheme of I things. I feel like stopping all of the oil pumps in America would have made America more dependent on foreign oil. Sure. So, uh, I, I mean, what, what, is, is he, what is the plan? Does this, he own This is pumps? not a GameStop level Yeah. Plan. Again, I, yeah. again, I think... The, the, e the the evil guy's plans are, are really dumb. Yeah, uh, for sure. Because if you have shortages, then you don't have enough oil. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. How are you going to get up to your ski resort on the top of your mountain or your, yeah. your building? I, I don't know. He uh, Basically, Superman is back. He does this nice thing. He flies to the penthouse, and he finds that they have gone off to the Grand Canyon. Yes. Because people in New York they need to build computers in the Grand Canyon. Sure. So didn't they? Didn't Lex go to the Grand Canyon in one of the last movies or something? Isn't there always like I don't, we're just going to go to the Southwest U.S. to they, blow stuff up? They were really obsessed with the Grand Canyon for for reasons I I don't. Yeah, understand. is this just another eighties thing? I I don't know if it was cheap filming out there or or what or the. Why did they have to tell Superman where they were? Y yeah, I. You could have just disappeared. It's, it's and he could have found you later. It's very strange. The movie does devote a lot of time to weird stuff, like the villains going down the wall of the Grand Canyon in these weird balloon chairs. Yeah, that's just showing off. It's like, hey, we got some money. Uh, we got three balloon chairs, but we don't have one for Richard Pryor. So he rides a donkey. Yeah, I feel like this is just scheduling around him not being on set. So they were like, well, you don't, you know, you can come in later. You'd be on a donkey for a while. It's a strange use of time and money, but right. uh, I mean, or they don't want him to be shooting missiles at Superman, which is what they uh, end yeah. up doing. I, I I don't I don't know. They get down there, they find their giant computer. The computer right. is uh, again the, the original idea was that this was going to be Brainiac somehow. Um, it, it bears right. no like, resemblance to any Brainiac. Right. Comic, Once again, they they have built the set before having any plan of what to do with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, Vera decides that she knows how to use the computer. Yeah, she doesn't need Richard Pryor. She's, she's, they she's, don't need him anymore. She's gone to the computer class. Well, I mean, once you take that one data processing class, mm -hmm. you can operate a giant three-story computer that's in the Grand Canyon. It checks out. It checks out. Yeah. So she does this, and uh, and she she's very excited. Say, but... Ross is really impressed with everything. It's like his the first time him seeing it, he's like, "Yes, this is this is a thing. These are all computers." He's, oh. he's proud of what he's done. He, he look at this. We got some great computer graphics. Now they they load up what is it looks like an Atari Superman game. Yep. And uh, it was an Atari Superman game. They were actually making Superman three, but because of the poor reception of the movie, they never actually released the video game. But this this little bit where Ross is. Uh, is is pretending missiles, to, yeah. yeah it's like he's pretending to shoot in an, like an eight bit Superman video game yeah um, that is that would have been a game you might have played once upon a time so we get some missiles that were hidden yeah it, it's just the most ludicrous looking video game right ever. and they're like making fun of him for like oh you need to you know he has this little joysticks and he's yeah. shooting oh you almost got him oh yeah it's like it, they're acting like it is an arcade well it keeps score. That's yeah, the, no, there is a score. Like, why is there a score for misses? Yeah, for misses right. as well. And uh, or and why are they so happy about playing this game? Like, they could just get a video, they could just get a Pac Man and yeah. have the same joy. They're very they're like, very pleased. They've launched like millions of dollars worth of missiles at Superman to no effect. Sure, and they're really happy about this. It is it is altogether weird. So Superman um, eventually right. So eventually they have the super big missile. Yeah. That is the size of a, a bus. Yeah, for some reason, it's a giant red button, and it uh, yeah. it manages to certainly knock Superman back for a while. Right, and he'll never see it coming because it's a giant missile as opposed to the little missiles that he's been dodging for the past. Sure, it seems minutes. to sneak up on him for reasons right. that are unclear. Yeah, um, yeah. So, so Superman kind of wins and does a little celebration dance, but the giant missile comes out of nowhere. Yep, surprises him. And he's blown up, and he goes. He he spins off. Oh no, Superman! Yeah, he's he's he spins around, 
kind of gets stuck in a rock for a while. Yes. But uh, he's... Who knew that you could just hit Superman with a big missile? And, and Lex Luthor was doing it wrong all this time. Everyone so knows. He finally, though, Superman does recover. And he basically gets into the computer yep. and he says, hey, you know, this is this is bad. Right. Richard Pryor finally joins them. Yeah. And then the computer analyzes Superman to find his weakness, which is kryptonite. Right. So they shoot a crypt. So the computer, computer makes a kryptonite ray and right. shoots him with it. It figures out the unknowable ingredient, apparently. Yeah. They figured it out. And so Superman's getting hurt. Yeah, and this is Richard Pryor's decided he can't be a part of this anymore. So he he basically goes down. Yeah, they tell him you're going to be the man known as the one who killed Superman, and he's like, I, I don't want that. Yeah, I don't want to be that guy. Twitter will be all over me for that. He'll never uh, he'll let be canceled for sure. He'll be he'll be totally canceled. So so then he he uses his yo-yo to uh, kind of get that get off the the ledge. He finds the one button or the one circuit that he can eat. Yeah. And uh, that stops the laser. Temporarily. Temporarily. Yeah. But then the computer becomes sentient because that is a thing that we've established in this movie that computers can do somehow. Right. This is where it really becomes Brainiac. And right. The computer... It starts sucking up power from the Grand Canyon because yes. there's lots of power lines going through the Grand Canyon. I mean, it's the, the weakness of the computer is it needs power. Yes. Yeah. So, so Richard Pryor is, has taken out the spark plug. Right. The computer is down. It gains sentience. Right. At this point, the bad guys are no longer the bad guys. Well, the bad guys are, are confused They're, they're, they're kind of like, well, there's no power, so what can we do? Well, they do go to try and stop Richard Pryor. He does eat the he, yep. opponent. He eats the... Yep. So rather than waiting for him to poop, they kind of give up. Yep. Um, and but, so that shuts down all the power on the, uh, the eastern seaboard. But the computer comes back to life, yep. and then it immediately starts back in the kryptonite ray. Yep. Richard Pryor... It feels like Superman could have done something while the kryptonite ray was off. Yeah, he just kind of took a nap during that period. Well, yeah. He, he's kind of... This is not the strongest, most powerful Superman. So yeah. uh, Richard Pryor hacks up the kryptonite beam, Yep. but the computer at this point has engages its self-defense. Beams. Yeah, it has yeah. tractor beams and other things that don't... So it, it shoots Richard sense. Pryor right in the dick. And then <laughs> and he goes flying. And he, he goes flying. <laughs> it does. It does shoot. To, and, and Superman's like, I'm not getting shot in the dick. And he flies off. Yeah. No. He he's he has a new plan. So yeah. he flies off. See. He yeah. He takes off, and it's like, oh no, is Superman a coward? Is what the the audience has to be thinking. Superman is yeah is very cowardly. Right. Because the computer can sense people's weakness, and yes. so uh, he needs to find something. That uh, the computer will not sense as as a danger, as a threat. Yeah, but then so, all the the bad guys run out of the computer, and and this comes to one of the like the honestly creepiest moments. So yeah, yeah. it it sucks uh, Vera into the computer, right? And then welds like metal plates to her face and turns her into a robot zombie, right? Because this is a thing that computers yeah. can do. Now this was legitimately terrifying as a kid. If you're you're in board, you're you're coming around to all this, it's all good. But suddenly. Like her skin turns silver and yep. she's got metal pieces. Different hair, probably a different actress. Yeah, probably. Yeah. But now she can shoot weird tractor beams out of her fingers, which she immediately uses to shoot uh, Lorelei Lorelei in, yeah. in the dick. Right. Yep. Uh, as you do. As you do. <laughs> and then her brother also in the dick. It, it really, it is. Why did they she's aim She's kind of shooting him with a disco laser. Why did it go right? Why did she shoot him right in the dick? Like, well, I, you know. Ross is actually goes up a little higher, but everybody else yeah. got it right in the dick. Yeah. Now, I don't I don't know what's going on. Again. Yeah. So Superman uh, basically flies back to it's in a callback. Right. You know, with some pretty, pretty genius. The plot, uh, the plot acid. Yeah. He gets the plot acid. The entire country is losing power, by the way, at this point. Because that's how our grid works. Yes. So Superman shows up with uh, the, the plot acid behind his back, which yep. the computer immediately you know, sees as this thing is not a threat, not a threat. It's, it's useless crap. Uh, danger level zero. Yeah. And it allows Superman to kind of walk into the computer and kind of being overtaken. They're about to turn him yeah. also into a computer zombie. Right. They, they shoot the laser at him and he blocks it with his hand. Yeah. And, uh, you know, things start to blow up and then the computer starts, you know, moving around and doing stuff. Right. See, so sneak it up on him. Yeah, the computer does sneak up on him from behind. Yeah, as computers do. Uh, Lorelai, meanwhile, has the disco ball laser yeah, uh, pretty much at her, yep. her junk. Um, 
Again, I don't know why they put it there, but that's okay. So right. Superman falls into the computer. What? And but he, uh, he is able before the computer takes him over, because that's the thing computers do, is he's able to get the top off the acid. Yes. And it heats up uh, above yeah. whatever the temperature of the plot determined yeah. is. It turns does into, he use his lasers to uh, heat it up, or does it just heat up naturally? I think it just heats up naturally. It's kind of like the uh, yeah. the coronavirus vaccine, I in see. that if you, if you expose it to any heat, it immediately turns into uh, super acid. I see. That's, is that that's, how that works? That's how it works. That's why they yeah, keep okay. it in... in uh, so this is some great acting of cool like Superman, you know, being you yeah, know, taken super- over by a computer. Yeah, he's about to become a Superman brainiac. Again, but, again he can fly off into space, but he can't Defeat metal, I, I guess. Yeah, it's this is the most powerful stuff. So the super acid basically bubbles like when you put uh, baking soda in your volcano. Yeah, right, it's uh, a volcano. Yeah, and it splatters hot it's lava everywhere, jizz everywhere. Um, the computer blows up. Yeah, uh, you know Superman's able to to get out of there. Right, and. Uh, I now, don't know. Do we really wrap up the, now Vera the is, Ross Webster and the Vera? Vera gets out. I well, mean, do we see her later? Yeah. Do we see her later? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But I don't remember if they, they – it's not like they go to jail or anything. Well, I think they're – Doesn't they, he just fly off he with – flies the, off with Richard Pryor. And right, but, but we don't know what happens. The other three are just kind of stuck there with their balloon. They kind of talk about things. how they're going to be going away for a long time or they're in, they're in some trouble. Right. But Superman has forgiven Richard Pryor for everything. Yeah, because Richard Pryor didn't do anything wrong other than all the stuff he did wrong. Yeah. Well, that's how that's how criminality works. Um, technically, Lorelai, I mean, she had sex with him, so I think he owes her something. I mean, he, she, he, could, he could call her. She's probably pregnant with his baby at this point. Hey, I That's mean, what Superman 4 should have been. A little super baby flying around causing trouble. Yeah, okay. That's that's what I would have done. Yeah, you're right. Vera does manage to escape out of this thing, uh, restored back into human humanity. I mean, it feels like they could just build this computer again if they knew what yeah, sure. they were doing. I mean, they had the plans that were on the They probably napkins. only had one copy of the napkins. Yeah. That's that's kind of what I'm that's thinking. Probably, here. It probably went down with the ship. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's, how, you, that's how criminal masterminds work. So... Uh, Superman flies off with Richard Pryor. They have a nice little chat. Yeah. Richard Pryor, uh, supercomputer genius, uh, goes on to... I, I don't know what he goes on well, to. Well, see, they, they fly into the coal uh, mine, I guess, a uh, coal field. I, yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure why they decided to leave him here. but Well, it's like he's, he's tired of flying. So Superman needs to make a diamond, yeah. which I think this is, this is very cool. Yeah, he, but it feels like if you can just do that, why don't you just do that all day and retire with all the money and... Be a rich billionaire, you know, diamond magnet. Sure. And be a crime fighter in your spare time. I mean, this is... I like how he makes the diamond as it's it's perfectly cut and chiseled. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. he is Superman. He's got some skills. So yeah. he makes the diamond. Right. Uh, he does not use this diamond to cure poverty or... No, no. Yeah. He's making a ring uh, to give to Lana. Yeah, because he, he wants back in Lana. Yeah. You're right. So... Yep. So uh, then he leaves. He leaves Richard Pryor. And Richard Pryor's like, "Well, I, I guess I'll take the bus." Yeah. Uh, and that's that's kind of the end of him. Yeah. Yeah. Why did DC has not done a spinoff Richard Pryor movie? Uh, but I mean, he's dead now. But well, yeah. But I mean, it feels like yeah, he could he could end up in Gotham. Sure. Like they could have had Richard Pryor appear in all the like a Richard Pryor Wonder right. Woman film. Just like he's the gold. computer hacker. He's yeah. just like oh uh, yeah. I know Superman. I mean, Richard Pryor, Batman, Richard Pryor, Wonder Woman, Richard Pryor, Apache Chief. They, yeah. had, they could have done all I mean, things. 1984, Wonder yeah. Woman, you could have had Richard oh. Pryor in it, and it would have been right I mean, there. you could have computerized Richard Pryor. I mean, you know, they could have Mandalorian looped it. Um, right. But anyway, so uh, Clark shows up and basically gives... The, the ring, and then uh, to replace the ring that she said she pawned off or, or right. something else. So I don't think he's actually proposing. No. He's I just, think he's just giving her a big-ass diamond for no reason. Yeah, the, one of the... Th- this is the biggest diamond on the planet. Right, yeah. So she is now a multi-billionaire. Right. And so then uh, Brad shows up, and uh, Clark gives him, you know... Now, why Brad move. showed up to Metropolis... Like he drove to Metropolis to drunkenly, to drunkenly assault his former wife, yeah, and kid I guess so. or something, and then, and he finds Clark there and blah blah blah. Yeah, and so now we're we, we're back in the Daily Planet. Lois uh, has returned. Lois has returned. She's broken some big story about Bermuda. Yeah, that Superman didn't need to be involved in. Yeah, so she she found the Bermuda art thieves. I think. Yep. 
And uh, she's weirdly tan and looks terrible, by the way. She's she's been doing uh, she's been spending a lot of time on Cocaine Mountain. Um, you know, I feel well. Bad. I mean, once the Websters, you know, were arrested, that cocaine had to go. Somewhere. I, I feel bad for her, but she did. Like, if you look at Lois at the beginning of the film, and then at this scene, like, do you think they just sprayed a tan on her and shot the scenes at the same time? I I would think so. She looks terrible, though. Yeah. It's it's not good. It's not and good uh, and then. Lana immediately shows off her giant ring, which makes right. Lois jealous. Right. And, uh, you know, and, and nobody is commenting on the fact this is the biggest diamond in the world. At right. This point. That That's she's okay. just wearing, that Clark gave it to her. Yeah. And then Clark just gave it to her. Yeah. On his uh, newspaper salary. It's yeah. all fine. This is, I mean, she's just an investigative journalist. She doesn't really need Yeah. To, she doesn't need to ask questions. No, no. It's all checked out. It, it all checks out. So they bring in, the, again, another callback. They bring a new bingo machine in. Yep. This one is computers. And as soon as they turn it on, the computer blows up and starts spraying balls everywhere. Right. As computers do, because as you know, we can't trust computers. That's, that's, we that's want the them. lesson of this movie. It is the movie. Yeah. And then uh, we finally, we conclude with uh, Superman righting all of his wrongs, which in this case is flying back to Italy yep. and messing up the building again. Messing right. He's going to set the Tower of Pisa yes. back the way it broken already was. Right. Which is going to then piss off the statue maker who's yeah. made a bunch of yeah. erect uh, leaning Tower of Pisas. Right. Again, it still feels like he could have sold those. I don't know why he's wrecking his inventory. Like yeah. That. He, this is... <laughs> this is the most. This has to be the most racist casting uh, of all the movies. I mean, they could have called him Mario, and his his buddy Luigi. I'm sure his name is Mario. If you look in the like the credits, <laughs> I would be totally unsurprised if his, he's listed as Mario, or uh, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> he destroys all the statues. Superman, smiling, flies off into space, basically yep. proud of everything he's done. Gives a little wave, and he is. This is Superman three. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I love this movie. Yeah. I, I, it is, it is absolutely ridiculous. It makes no sense. Um, well, I, that's not true, actually. It makes well, plenty of sense. In, it's in just a stupid. Superman sense, I think it kind of makes sense. <laughs> but the stakes of it are so weird. <laughs> and then it just feels like the, the computer at the end does, isn't connected to things that they could actually do. No. And then, I, uh, yeah. It, 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 a lot of strange choices. I mean, the thing about this movie that I, I guess I really love is that, um, you know, I, none of like you wouldn't make a movie like this today. You couldn't, you know, Super at this point is a big franchise. It's uh, even though it was panned, a lot of people hated this movie. Still made a lot of money for the time period it was in. Um, I think it. It. Uh, I, I mean, you just imagine if you will, they make what would be Avengers five, and in Avengers five. It's got Will Ferrell in it, and they're solving, I don't know, like... Uh, Kevin Hart just shows up, and he has like just a 20-minute hunk where he's on his own little, you know, <laughs> adventure. Yeah. He has to get something, you know, for Thor. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, right. and it, but it makes no sense. I mean, that's that would be the kind of what, what the movie would be. Um, it, is, it is very, very odd. Th this movie couldn't be made today. Um, so I appreciate the fact that it is so stupid and, and ridiculous and yet it is, it very much captures the, uh, the Superman feeling of the, of the, uh, seventies. I'm also still also very impressed that so much of this movie was actually filmed in Canada. I don't know why that, that is also fascinating to me, but, uh, but there you go. He didn't die. I ask you to kill Superman and you're telling me you couldn't even do that one simple thing. Ah. Oh. All right, Webster, the game's over. But only the man who pulled the switch on Superman. Oh, uh, see, I'm not with them, Superman. You're gonna fool me, mister. Can pull the plug on Super Machine. You're going to go down in history as the man who killed Superman. Um, no. Thank you, brother. Superman 3. Uh, watch the trees. Whoa! This time is going to be the best time of all.
I, I, I don't know. I, I enjoyed it. it. It's it's ridiculous fun. If you go into this movie wanting to kind of lightly enjoy something ludicrous that does not take itself too seriously, then this is the movie for you. Um, I think if you were if you were coming into this thing and you were like expecting a serious, legitimate Superman film, you are going to be pissed. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, as a movie, this movie is terrible, but uh, it is very watchable and very enjoyable. And uh, yeah, it does kind of follow the first two movies as far as in that Superman world. Uh, unfortunately, the guy is named uh, Pisa Pease, the Pease Vendor. He's a vendor. That's all we got. He's uh, a vendor. I, I would have loved to see that be Mario. <laughs> that that was what it felt like it needed to be. I don't know. It, it's funny. I, I of course I love Richard Pryor, so it's nice to see him doing work and yeah. And uh, that's all funny. Yeah. He apparently hated this movie. Well, I mean, yeah, he didn't really get enough work. I mean, most of his like Gene Wilder movies are, are they're not. You don't see them anymore. They're not. They didn't age yeah. great. Uh, Eddie Murphy kind of took over that's his true. corner and became the bigger star and. Um, I mean, you have to say that he wrote Blazing Saddles and was supposed to be in it, but yeah, the studio wouldn't let him. And you know, it's it's uh, I don't know. It's it's a funny it, it's it's a funny film. I definitely recommend. Uh, you've got to watch this as a moment in time. I think it captures the time period really well. It does capture seventies comics. It, it has that feel to it. And if you're tired of the MCU, if you feel like the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe is too much of a plot device and, you know, dark and cold Zack Snyder stuff is just, you know, you're, you're tired of all that. This is, uh, this is the perfect antidote to all of that. This, you, this could not be further away from the MCU and Zack Snyder worlds. I don't, I don't think you could get any farther away than this. I don't know. What, <laughs> where do we go next? What, what film are we, are we going to now? We, we need to do Supergirl. People yeah. have been asking for that. We, I mean, I think if, Michael Keaton, Batman. I know. I, I, I'm just wondering. We got to do if we're going to do them in kind of order. We, we got to do Supergirl to catch up. Yeah. We have to do Superman four, mm -hmm. which is what the quest for peace. Is yeah, that, the quest uh, for peace. Uh, maybe we do both of those at the same time. That's got to. I'm going to have to be a drunker to do those movies. Yeah, that's not good. Um, I'm just wondering if there's anything. Um, we got to flip over to Marvel, so we got to get like the is 70s. There, is uh, there anything? Well, I'm not going to. You're not going to do the, the, <laughs> the Roger Corman Fantastic Four that yes. doesn't exist. <laughs> oh, you got to do that. Uh, that terrible Captain America movie. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm just wondering if there's anything between Superman 4 and uh, the Tim Burton Batman. Yeah. Because it's like I really want to get to the Tim Burton Batmans next because those are legitimately, you know, fun watches. They are. But then that also suffers from the, the you know, the third or fourth yeah. Batman movie. We. Those get really weird. Sure. And then... Uh, Mel Kilmer shows up. And then we get to the late 90s, and you got the, the Daredevil and Elektra. And, yes. Oh, those are... Oh, we're so much fun we're going to have. Yeah, and then, then we get Spider-Man. Yeah. That, that, that's good. And then probably some terrible Fantastic Fours. That Blade is in there. That'll be fun. Blade. Yeah, Blade's good. Yeah. Cool. And then Steel. Yeah. And then, yeah. then maybe we can get to the MCU and... Pam Anderson's barbed wire. Other, no, we're not doing barbed wire. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're going to have some fun. Oh, yeah. So, so it's more, is there anything in between Superman 4 and Batman, or should we just... Go all in. Should we, yeah. Well, that, that question is for you. So please, in the comments below, why don't you let us know what you'd like us to do. Uh, we're going to continue to get into this. It's a lot of fun. Ryan, thank you very much. It's good uh, seeing you in person here, spreading the COVID disease around. As we do. Yeah, as we do. All right. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Hey, like and subscribe and all that, that crap that's in the description that you can do. It's all, all there. Uh, thanks, thanks for listening.